Hello everyone and welcome back to Sendix Web Channel, where today we'll be looking at the latest from the ECMWF six week anomaly charts to see what they are showing. Now I would show you the model data, uh, but it's all over the place at the moment and there's not really much certainty on anything. Um, but I will be going through it in my special Send It Xmas Eve live stream, which will be taking place from around half seven tomorrow. So hopefully I'll see some of you then. Um, it's kind of because the internet broke for you uh, on Saturday and um, yeah, I kind of wanted to do another one and I think it could be quite an interesting one so make sure to join in at 7.30 for an epic. So yeah, I'm going to look at the latest ECM anomaly charts to see what they are showing. Remember, these change daily but we're looking at the main model trends. Now, as we all know at the moment and um, continuing from the 22nd to the 29th of December, we are going to see high pressure and it's going to continue to dominate the weather. Um, it's going to sit just to the north of the UK we have a slack easterly wind around that. So nothing too major going on. Quite anticyclonic, mostly dry, cold and frosty uh, possibilities. That's the wrong one. Whoopsie daisy, that's for later on. Um, but you can see the temperature anomalies are around to slightly below average in the south. One to three degrees below average. Slightly near, well, to near normal further northwards for the Republic of Northern Ireland. Slightly below average as well for a tendency to be. But with that sort of precipitation signal, you can see we are mostly dry. Uh, or drier than average, I should say. With that, maybe the potential for a couple, and I mean a very low risk, of some wintry showers in the south through Christmas Day. Uh, but apart from that, mostly dry is the definite theme here. Now let's see if that trend continues into week two. The 29th of December to the 5th of January. Higher pressure is now in the Atlantic. It's in, it's in the North Atlantic. Um, lower pressures over Eastern Europe. Well, kind of we have been protected by the high. So the colder air is surging into parts of Western Europe. So you can see like the Netherlands, uh, Norway, Sweden, Denmark. Seeing some colder air. However, the UK has been protected by the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. So we're kind of seeing like a slack northwesterly airflow around. That could be cold, but more tendency to still be from an Atlantic direction with that the higher pressure needs to be further north, west and westwards. Um, west and north, westwards, like up the, up the proper Atlantic, north Atlantic, proper out in the Atlantic, rather than centre just to the west of the UK. Um, it needs to be further westwards to really see the colder air sinking southwards and send it south. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, still cold, but generally nothing too major going on. See the cold plunger there into eastern Europe, but the UK on the periphery of that, we've been protected by the higher pressure ridge, winds in from a slack northwesterly airflow. Temperature anomalies are, again, well, they're a little bit colder than average, as you'd expect, with that sort of flow. In fact, most of Europe is colder than average. Bit of a change from what we saw at the start of the um, of the month, indefinitely, um, definitely, I should say, um, when it was all above average, a big switch, um, being predicted at least, anyway. So there's temperature Temperatures at the um, well, at the above levels, the upper air levels, upper air temperatures, 850 HPA temperatures, may go above average at times. However, you can see the surface temperatures do not come up, and that's just due to the positioning of the high pressure, which can, even if it have a mild wind direction, considering the time of year, can still be quite cold. Uh, and you'd expect quite a bit of frost with that as well. Looking at the precipitation anomalies, they are drier than average. You can see slightly wetter in parts across Eastern Europe, but that's due to low pressure sinking southwards, and that could be snowy um, and wintry in places. Uh, but of course, that is just surmising. It is a long way Oh, well, it's, even now, from the 29th to the 5th of Jan, it's a long way off, considering what's taking place at the moment um, with the model output. Moving on to week 3, is the 5th to the 12th of January. We see higher pressure extending to the north and the west of the UK, up towards um, the east of Europe. However, um, you can see lower pressure up towards Greenland and lower pressure over Spain. Winds with that, probably in from an easterly direction. So the winds are in from off the continent there, uh, but whether the continent is cold is a different story because higher pressure's right, a bit positioned too far north, as I'd say, towards Siberia to really see the proper cold. You need to be further westwards towards Scandi. We need to send it to Scandi High um, to see anything too interesting there. Um, 500 below heights also spots this um, northern blocking just to the northwest of the UK, extending into Scandinavia and Siberia. Lower pressure systems down to the south with the jet stream. That's the sort of rough positioning, by the way, is the jet stream, which brings us our, um, well, uh, unsettled weather. And um, that's sinking southwards, which is why we're seeing the potential for cold weather. Just will it come off? Um, with the temperature anomalies, Oopsie days, that's the wrong week, but ooh. <laughs> temperature anomalies are around to slightly below average for all parts of the UK and Ireland. Uh, if we move on to precipitation as well, drier than average trend still remains. 
Moving on to week four is the mean sealed pressure anomalies. Again, the 12th to the 19th of January. And that is a very, very, very good chart if that came off. Higher pressure is up to the north of the UK. Proper northern blocking. And we bring in a proper easterly wind. I'd assume that the air we're bringing in is from Western Russia, so it would be quite cold if that were to come off. Lower pressure again remaining to the south with a southerly track jet stream carrying the Atlantic weather southwards. Um, moving on to the 500 millar heights, again, very similar theme, uh, which is pretty good to see some support. And temperature anomalies are around just slightly below average again for many parts of Western Europe and um, extending into Russia as well. Um, the only parts seeing slightly milder temperatures uh, um, Norway and Sweden and Siberia as we are seeing northern blocking patterns developing. So a very interesting week. If that were to come off, I'd expect widespread cold and snow risks. However, remember that these charts do change daily, so are open to change. Um, Precipitation anomalies are around to slightly above average, oh, sorry, drier than average, I should say. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a pretty interesting chart, that. Now, we are getting a long way out. Week 5 is the 19th of 26th of Jan. And again, we do see higher pressure um, to the north. However, lower pressure's there um, towards Greenland. Um, so it's probably mostly dry and settled there, I'd say, um, with that one. So, yeah, higher pressure's dominating the weather again. Um, it's set over and just to the north of the UK. Maybe a slack easterly flow, but mostly anticyclonic gloom. So probably some depressing days um, and dry weather. Temperature anomalies, the colder air is beginning to shift further eastwards into Eastern Europe. The UK, on the other hand is around average to no signal. If you look at the sea surf temperatures around the UK and in the North Atlantic, they are above average or predicted to be, so not a great sign, I'd say. Precipitation anomalies are drier than average to the west um, and wetter than average slightly to the north. So, all over the place, really. And then, finally, week 6 is the 26th of Jan to the 2nd of Feb. And higher pressure is really extending um, across Europe, really from Canada and Alaska towards Eastern Europe. So a very big extension of um, high pressure, which would, again, bring anticyclonic gloom, pretty, you know, could be cold days, I suppose, probably lots of muggy, uh, that's not muggy, um, probably lots of fog um, and pretty depressing um, cold gloom weather. Nothing too much to write about there. Um, but, yeah, that's that. Temperature anomalies again around to slightly below average in the south. It's pretty interesting to see below average temperatures pretty much being favoured for the entirety of the month. That's quite rare in itself. Um, but this one to watch possibly. Um, Substation anomalies are around to slightly drier than average um, on balance. So again, eh, not too bad. I would say on balance that we're actually favouring um, a colder than average January with that. It actually looks very interesting. Um, were it to come off, lots of northern blocking. Um, so we'll have to wait and see. Now, this might be something to take encouragement from. If we have a look at the weather regime's probability from the ECM, so basically what's been predicted through um, January, then you can see the patterns are very interesting. And definitely January is not a month to write off just yet, I would say, is the theme here. If we have a look, and that extends to the 2nd of Feb, if we have a look throughout, something very interesting to know is that the positive NAO signal, which is high pressure to the south, the Azores high, usually to the south, lower pressure systems to the north or tracking through the UK, is not the favoured pattern. As you can see, as we move through the first week of January, the favoured pattern is an Atlantic ridge, so that higher pressure retrogressing in the Atlantic, um, trying to go up towards Greenland, doesn't necessarily mean that, it just means blocking off low pressure systems in the Atlantic from going towards the UK and can allow um, colder weather systems from the north, depending on the orientation and the exact positioning of the air mass. In this case, it looks like it might be quite a northwesterly tilt to the airflow, so probably not that cold, probably just a little bit below average, maybe. As we go throughout January, though, you can see that theme of northern blocking, or the block um, reds, quite strongly, as well as the other um, negative NAO and the Atlantic Ridge being quite favoured here. Um, which is a very good sign. If we do see blocking, that can mean northern blocking towards Scandinavia, like we're seeing at the moment, that northern blocking towards Scandi, Scandinavian high, send it to Scandi high. Um, again, we can see positioning of the high pressure to south of Greenland, and we can see it to north of Greenland, up towards Siberia, where we don't benefit. So there's a lot at play, basically, with the uh, with the atmospheric drivers. Um, but if, if we were to take this on face value, then you could say that there is potential for quite blocked um, block patterns throughout 
um, January, which could bring some interest. I wouldn't say it's anything to write off just yet. Um, people calling the winter a write off. I think you're going a bit too far, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, I I'd say wait, wait, just just watch this space and see um, what develops. But these are pretty good signs on face value, I would say, and definitely want to watch to see how they develop over the coming days and weeks. Of course, I'll keep you posted on that. Um, but yeah. Make sure to tune into tomorrow's Xmas live stream. So yeah, maybe maybe interesting period throughout January and one to watch. And I'll obviously keep you posted on all that. Thank you all for watching. Comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye, everyone.